Hello everyone, this is my Mark 1 Audi TT which I bought on Copart a few weeks back for 475 quid. And these are my new Crocs. Pretty cool, right? But what is Copart anyway? Well, it's this platform that allows you to bid on ex-police cars, damaged cars, insurance, write-offs and many more things. But occasionally there is the oddball which is just a unwanted part exchange or something with a minor but very fixable issue and since picking up this Audi TT I've managed to get it a new MOT without spending any more money on it whatsoever and so that got me thinking perhaps it's time to buy something else from Copart and so today we're going to do a little bit of shopping and I thought I would bring you with me although we're not actually going to Copart they don't allow you to look at the cars physically we're just going to go and sit up in my office and do it on my laptop. Okay, well, welcome to the desk of potential financial mistakes because we're now looking at the Copart website. And immediately, actually, if we go to my dashboard, we can see there's two cars currently on my watch list. One of them is here. It's a 2003 Lexus LS430. Uh, it's got 149,000 miles on the clock. It's got, uh, it runs and drives. Apparently, there's only minor dents and scratches. And if we click on here, it will tell us a little bit more about the car. It's got two keys, it has a spare wheel, parking sensors front and rear, an MOT until October. I guess that's pretty critical when you're looking at cars like this. And yeah, some discrepancies. They all seem to have NMR check discrepancies. But this could be a really cool, very cheap little barge. I say little, it's not little in the slightest. I don't know what to make of this gold lettering, whether I like it or not. I think it might be a little bit, a little bit too Bel Air for me. But also on my watch list currently is one that I actually tried to win the other day, but the seller obviously rejected the final bid and has relisted it. It's this 307,000 mile Volvo XC90. As some of you might know, I think I've talked about them before, I've always fancied it, an XC90. If you watch the School of Rock, which is one of my favourite films, all of the parents of the children in the School of Rock, well not all of them, but lots and lots of them, if you, if you watch the scenes where they're pulling up to the school, are in XC90s, or maybe T5s or something similar. But uh, ever since that film, I've always wanted an XC90. I've seen it as quite a classy car. And this one, despite the mileage at 307,000, uh, okay, the bodywork doesn't look great. It looks a little bit like this door here doesn't shut properly. But then actually in another photo here, it looks like it does. Uh, 307,000 miles, but the interior, look at it, barely looks satin in the back. The piping looks like it's still showing color on the leather. The wood looks good. And if you look at the information on the car, the only thing that it flags is that the bonnet is jammed. But I feel like that's nothing you can't sort with a hammer, is it? So this is one I actually I actually was bidding on about a week ago and I bid up to, I think, £400. And uh, someone outbid me, but then the seller obviously rejected that bid. But then when I looked on, I've forgotten the website, but it's this website where you type in your number plate and it's for scrap and they'll tell you what the car or what they'll pay you for the car a bit like we buy any car but for scrap and i think it was something like 525 pounds for this xc90 so when it comes to the bidding again i think i'm going to bid a little bit more this time and try and win it but you have to uh bear in mind there's some fees with copart so i think if i bid 400 quid on this one the fee is around i think four to six hundred pounds it's like 115 quid so you pay that on top that goes to Copart, and then you either, the only way you can get a car from Copart, you can't drive to Copart and, and drive the car away, you either have to pay them to have it delivered to you, or you have to have a, a flatbed truck and, and pick it up yourself, but you cannot drive it away, like literally from their premises. So that's another cost to factor in. But you can put in your location, and it'll, it'll let you know how much it's gonna cost you to get it delivered. So I think this one actually is in uh, Sandy, which is relatively close. I think the closest Copart site to where I live. 
and uh, it was something like 115 quid for delivery. So if I can get this for about 500 quid on the bid, it will cost me 750 or so all in. And I think that would be a great little buy, wouldn't it? I mean, 307,000 mile XE90, I think that would be fun, don't you? It's 250,000 miles to the moon. So that puts it into perspective somewhat, doesn't it? Just very quickly before we look at more cars, uh, I want to tell you uh, a few things about today's video sponsor, whom save me a lot of time actually, and uh, mean that I can spend more time, well, potentially making financial errors. So uh, quickly, just a few words from them. So thank you then to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. Now these absolute legends have been lifesavers many times over the years that I've been using them. And this week is no exception because I've just got back from quite a long trip away. And of course, when you come home, the fridge is always empty, the drawers are empty, and the last thing you wanna be doing on the way home from the airport is going to the supermarket. So extremely helpfully, I ordered a box from HelloFresh to arrive the day after I returned from my trip. We got in really late, it was on the door the next morning, brought it in, and I've got all my meals sorted for the week. Now, I absolutely love HelloFresh, and not because I'm particularly interested in cooking or any good at it, certainly not the latter, but because it just makes my life so simple. Now, their website is extremely straightforward, and in just a few clicks, you can choose from hundreds of different types of meals and have it delivered to your door. There's endless, endless options, and you actually never get bored of the meals that they offer. These three I've got this week are ones I've never tried before. Each meal is packaged and labeled according to the instructions that are sent with the box, which are coincidentally extremely easy to follow, even for someone like me that doesn't know the first thing about a kitchen. But very, very straightforward, and it makes it extremely methodical and easy to cook these amazing dishes, actually. Stuff that I genuinely wouldn't normally try, but these just taste so good. So not only has my life been made a lot more simple this week thanks to HelloFresh, but Katie, my wife, is gonna be very happy that I'm gonna be doing some of the cooking this week. But most amazing, actually, is the incredible offer that they are giving you guys from this video. Using my code 60 Hello Joel. if you scan the QR code on screen, you can get yourself an incredible 60% off your first box and then 25% off your next eight boxes thereafter. If you've thought about using HelloFresh before, well then this is definitely your chance to do it. 60% off your first box and 25% off your next eight. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for watching. Let's get back to it. So as mentioned, I think the bread and butter of uh, Copart really is things like this, these, these write-offs or S, yeah, category S, repairable cars, um, things like this is a 2021. Porsche Cayenne. Now this doesn't interest me at all. I think um, Matt Armstrong does a pretty good job at repairing these sorts of things. I certainly don't have the mindset, uh, patience or mechanical ability that he has, I think, to, to go in on something like this. But this interests me actually. Look at this. It's a 2001 Bentley Arnage. It says it's a category S. Does that mean it's damaged? Ah, yeah, look. It's got some damage here at the front. That doesn't really bother me too much. That looks pretty cosmetic, although it literally says category S. 6.75 litre. Look at the interior. Oh, oh my goodness. I would happily die sat in one of those seats. Absolutely stunning, isn't it? I've always fancied an Anage, but maybe we can find one on here that is, let's just try Bentley. See if we can find one that's not a write-off. We can, if we, oh, there's only five anyway. What's this one here? Category N, category U. U means unrecorded. Uh, it says there's rear end damage. Category N, minor dents and scratch. That's not too much of a problem, is it? Oh, and it's the absolute dream spec. This is a Continental GT. I really want to get one of these for Katie one day. It's, uh, what is the colour? I think it's a grey of some sort, isn't it? Oh, it's green. It doesn't look green, does it? I guess it is, it's sort of a, needs a good clean, but it is green with tan interior and the wood inserts. That is my absolute, oh yeah, the green shows up a bit more there. That is my absolute dream spec. But look, you can see insufficient coolant and the engine's running and we have an EML. Looks like a traction control light. So that seems like it might be a bit riddled, this one. But what is it anyway? What is it bid up to currently? Let's have a look. 
current bid £7,200. Estimated retail value is £15,750, which is mind-boggling, actually. It's a whole other topic, but the Continental GT, I think, is an absolute bargain at the moment. I think I'd probably prefer a, a Flying Spur, though, which is the, the five-door one. And actually, Jeremy Clarkson, we all know, is a man that could have any car he wants in the world. But the car that he went and bought fairly recently with his, with his own money was a Bentley Continental Flying Spur. Admittedly, not a first-generation one. I think his is a, a new one, but says it all, doesn't it, really? He's driven every car there is and could have any car he wants, but he has a Conti Flying Spur. So, yes, that's interesting. I'll definitely keep an eye on that. It's going to be out of my price range. I certainly don't have that sort of money to play with at the moment. And it's one thing when you bid 400 quid on a whim for a car on, on Copart. Um, really, you know, with the value of scrap at the moment, there's not much to lose, but... When you start talking about tens of thousands, I think you've got to have slightly bigger cojones than what I've got currently. Uh, so let's see what we've got then. I'm going to just quickly uh, filter it by used cars, uh, all types of vehicles, any year, all damage types. So I want to do minor dents and scratches or normal wear, maybe. What's that one then? 659 cars. I'm not interested in any of these newer sort of, I don't mean I don't want a Vauxhall Mocker, I'd rather have in my hands and clap and buy one of those cars. Uh, let's go category U, used, unrecorded. And let's do vehicle type. Oh, I don't know, there's too many filters, isn't there? Damage, low damage, secondary damage. No, we don't need to do that. Engine type, here we go. I'm just going to select, gosh, there's so many filters. I think I'm just going to select stuff with a 2.3 litre, because I don't want to filter out XC90s. Here we go. This is going to take a while, isn't it? Surely there's a better way of doing this. 2.3 litres and above, because then I'm not going to be seeing Vauxhall mockers and the likes, because I really, really couldn't be less interested. 9,290 cc, I'd love to see what that is. Okay, here we go, cool, big ending stuff, nice. Sort by auction date. So actually the next auction will happen tomorrow. It's Sunday now, so the next auction is tomorrow afternoon. At the Sandy location, actually, which is the one closest to me. So let's see if there's anything. I do, I don't know why, I do just like Volvos. I think, again, it's one of those things, I've never owned one, so it's an itch I need to scratch. I think, to be honest, this is probably the least interesting Volvo one could buy. This is a... X60, but as you can see, it seems to be in pretty good nick. There's no warning lights on the dash. It's only got 40,000 miles on the clock. Wow, what does it say about the additional number of keys? Three, number of former keepers? Three, MOT expired uh, a couple of years ago, and so presumably it would need some work. But apparently, it runs and drives, it's just minor dents and scratches. So that's why this Copart thing is quite interesting because potentially, I don't know if this is, well, I'd have to go on and, and check the, the, the registrations here. I'm not going to do it now, but you can go on, obviously, check the MOT history. Maybe that will tell the story as to why it's on here because it could have failed on something pretty major. But imagine this is just something that's been sat for a couple of years. Perhaps the former keeper passed away. It's just unwanted and this could be a punt that could pay off because you end up with a 40,000 mile Volvo for, I don't know, what does it say, two and a half estimated retail. This will probably bid no more than a thousand quid. So you could end up with a 40,000 mile Volvo S80 for about a grand. That's an interesting one. I might, I'm going to add it to my watch list just so I can update you guys on what happens with it. BMW 330D, cool cars, not that interesting. I've always fancied one of these shapes of CLS. BMW X5, the E53 shape, really do like those. Sort of like the baby Range Rover, isn't it? Because the early Range Rovers shared a lot of the technology from these X5. So again, always a car I've been interested in. Is it worth having a look? I bet it's the three litre diesel, isn't it? Three litre diesel, yeah. Probably the one I'd be least interested in, I think. Classic M badge. The day I see a BMW on Copart that doesn't have stuck on M badges is the day that I win the lottery. Yeah, 
doesn't look like it's been kept particularly well, but again, could be a complete bargain for someone. Toyota Land Cruise. <laughs> I think they left off the R from the end there. It's a 1999 shape. Looks pretty retro, doesn't it? Probably not for me, but again, 3.4 litre diesel, four speed, oh sorry, 3.4 litre petrol. 216,000 miles on the clock, already being bid up to 1,300 quid. When there are Land Cruisers, people seem to jump on them pretty quick. Here's a bit of me, look, Land Rover, Land Rover Range Rover Sports. I don't know why, for my entire life, I've absolutely despised this shape of Range Rover Sport, but recently, and, and maybe it's because I'm just looking for any excuse to get back into a Range Rover, and these are a little bit cheaper, I just find these things really cool now. Admittedly, not one that's black with black wheels and it's been, you know, had everything from Powerful UK stuck onto it, but uh, this one's not grey either. But one like this in better condition, grey with a cream or tan interior, I can get behind that. And interestingly, I don't know if this is a, a, an example of it, there's no picture of the steering wheel, but these Range Rover Sports, a lot of them, I think if you had a HSE or higher, came with adaptive cruise control and you couldn't get a Range Rover, a full size Range Rover with cruise control, sorry, adaptive cruise control until they facelifted it in 2000 and end of 2009. So I find that quite interesting because you were able to have adaptive cruise control on these sports from much earlier. Anyway, who cares? But <laughs> something I've observed from looking at quite a lot of these. There's another one there, but I do prefer the earlier pre-facelift ones. Scroll back to the top. Jeep. A couple of Nissan Pathfinders, they look BMW 7 Series, that's up my street, isn't it? Ah, oh, this is interesting, 2006 630i, horrible, horrible wheels, and they've been painted black, as per usual. But it's got a cream interior, which means there's potential, you could change them back to silver. It's got the 3 litre engine, which is not the one I'd be most interested in, but it is the most reliable, or at least unreliable, should I say, of the pick. Uh, it does look pretty worn out, doesn't it? I mean, things like Bentley Continental GTs that are green with a tan interior, I'm not too worried about them being on Copart because I feel like they're just not particularly desirable, but a 6 Series with black wheels that have been curbed around the globe, um, I do worry why it's on Copart. I don't trust cars like the BMWs as much. Land Rover Discovery, I think you all probably know, that's something I'm after at the moment. I think I was really close to buying a Discovery or an XC90, but I, both, I think, in the winter. And then I didn't, and now we're sort of in the middle of the summer, and I don't, I don't really feel like having a sort of farmy seven-seater 4x4, but I think when we come round to the winter, I would quite like a Discovery 3. I've always loved the boxy shape and I just have an obsession with owning a seven seat at the moment. But like I say, genuinely, if this XC90, when is it? Two days, that auction is in two days. If that XC90, if I can pick it up for around, well, 500 quid bid, plus the fees, I'll have that. I will buy it. I will absolutely buy that. Let me know whether you think I should buy that XC90. 307,000 miles. Maybe I could add another 3,000 miles by driving it to Sweden and back or something. Taking it home prove how reliable it is. Another XC90 there, that one doesn't have moon miles on it, so it's not as interesting to me. This is interesting, this is a long wheelbase, later generation, 7 series, still the 3 litre diesel, but this particular engine is absolutely fantastic. Get 70 miles per gallon out of it with, without any issues. I think this is the car that Joe Achilles bought to drive to Madrid on one tank of fuel which he did successfully, he did a thousand miles on the tank. Was his the 730, I think it was, maybe it was a slightly newer one. But again, estimated retail value, 8,400 quid. I guarantee it'll only bid up to three or four grand. You do get cars a lot cheaper. You have to add the fees on top, obviously, like I say, but even with those added in, that I reckon will be five grand. And so if it turns out to just need a little bit of cosmetic work and an MOT, you know, it can turn out to be pretty lucrative. I mean, my TT is a pretty good example. That cost me, I think, 799 quid all in with the fees. And 210 of that was delivery because it just so happened to be quite a long way away. 
and I didn't mean to bid on it. I probably wouldn't have bid on it if I saw the delivery was that much. But for all intents and purposes, seven, eight hundred quid that TT was, and I could retail it probably for two grand now. It's got a fresh MOT on it. Yes, it's not perfect. Yes, it's not the most desirable model. But if I advertised it at two grand and took 17, 1800 quid for it, I think that's perfectly realistic and I've made a grand just on a, on a punt, which is pretty nice. There's that LS430 we looked at earlier. I think I'm actually going to unwatch that. I'm sorry. I just saw it again a minute ago and was like, no. Jaguar XFS. This would be a nice successor to the S type, which is still around, by the way. Need to do some more videos with that. But I do fancy an XF because it's just, it's essentially the S-Type's replacement, isn't it? It'd be nice to just step it up a little bit with that car. I mean, that will always stay in the family, that car, because it's such a special car to us. But uh, yeah, XF, and, and this seems like a pretty good place to buy one because there's so many of them. And a lot of them, again, if you think about the sort of people that own XFs, if you find one that's in a bit of a granddad spec, often it seems to just be like a part exchange car where that, dealer just doesn't want to retail it and so it comes on here and you can get a bargain this one is the three liter diesel and it's great with black interior i feel like that's probably been owned by a wannabe boy racer so i'm not going to look at that one too much let's just see what else we've got on this page more xc90 oh there's a 911 here oh nice is it a tiptronic yes i think it is it's an auto yes it is a tiptronic car wouldn't completely dissuade me. If I could get a bargain, I would definitely have one of these. The 996 911, I did a vid I've done a few videos on these actually. Um, really have a soft spot for this car. I think obviously I had a 986 box dress, which I really do regret selling. And I, I might actually ask him if I can buy it back at some point. It's just a brilliant car. I mean, in terms of value, it doesn't get much better. But you can step it up a bit to uh, 996 911. And I would like to at some point, but maybe not a Tiptronic. And I'd like one with a sort of nice tan interior as well, I think. Audi TT, look. That's where it all started for me, this, this Copart Malarkey. This is already bid at 800. And, ah, that'll be because it is the 3.2 litre V6, which I've heard mixed things about. Gosh, it looks like there's all sorts of warning. Maybe it's not warning lights. I don't know what that's all about, though. Oh, I think it's just the auto thing. Yeah, the 3.2 V6. I've heard mixed things. I've heard everyone says that the 1.8 225 BAM is the one to have because you're essentially, what, 15 horsepower off the V6, but you're saving all that weight from not having the extra two cylinders and thus it just handles much better. But there's something about the V6 that I do fancy. I mean, it's such a great engine. Obviously, it's what they have in the R32. And I bet it, you know, it's going to sound a lot better than the 1.8 as well, isn't it? as I know, uh, but yeah, silver with black, not really the one I'd probably be after, but again, interesting, this will probably go for less than two grand, and that could be a little bit of a bargain, couldn't it? It's got an MOT until 23rd of August, that's about a month from now, so that's what I did with the TT, my TT. Cat clear as well. And let's just go, oh look, there's a box to rest. How did I almost miss that? See, this is something I would actually buy if it seemed like a good example. So this secondary damage grade three, I don't actually know what that means. I could look it up, but maybe you guys could tell me in the comments so that I can read from you. So yeah, so let's just have a quick look at the photos here. So it's a box to S, it's blue. It's got, I think it's the blue roof as well. It's not black, is it? Yeah, it looks like the blue roof. Gray interior, I like that. I think Boxster has to have, or any Porsche really for me, has to have a contrasting interior, or at least not black. My old one was silver with blue interior and blue roof, and I, I loved it. But this is quite nice as well. Blue with that sort of gray, sort of clay, isn't it? Clay interior. It's a six speed manual, because it's the S, and it's only got 72,000 miles on the clock. now. What are those warning lights? Are they warning lights? Maybe see if I can have a look at more detail. It's got some scratches. Yeah, a bit of lacquer peel on the bumper there. Still got the wheel and looks like it's got the original tool kit. It's got two keys I can see there. And can I quite see? 
I think they're the heated sweet seat sweets. I think they're the heated seat buttons because these are your windows. Or maybe not. I can't quite see, but I think that might have heated seats as well. And I like it. It's got the smaller wheels. I do prefer the bigger five spokes like my old one, but the smaller ones will give you just a slightly better ride, won't they? Huh. Okay, this is interesting. Let me just see if I can go back onto it and get a slightly more detail of that instrument cluster. Here, if I click HD, I don't know if it's going to... Okay, that's handbrake, that's passenger restraint, that's roof. Oh, so I, it's possible that the roof just wasn't fully up, but it is possible it's broken. What does it say? Roof not working. <laughs> Should have probably clicked that first. Which, I don't know, I mean, I've got a good relationship with the guys at uh, E Porsche and La Rose Porsche, so I'm sure they'd be able to help me out with that roof. Uh, at least let me know how much it's going to cost in an honest way. It's currently bid up to two grand. It's got a week left on it. I, I'm going to keep my eye on that because the 70,000 mile Boxster S, uh, obviously here it says estimated retail is eight and a half. Yeah, I'd say I wouldn't have much problems as a private seller getting seven grand for that tomorrow. So it's definitely worth keeping an eye on if, if I can get it for less than five to allow a grand to get that roof sorted if it's worst case. Um, yeah, that's that's worth a watch, isn't it? So I'm going to definitely have a look at that one. And then the last page is just this 1992 Chevrolet van. Uh, never say never, but it's also in Ireland and uh, it's probably not for me. And quickly, just before we stop, I'm going to do a search for Range Rover. Apparently there's only, let me just go on all. Land Rover, Range Rover, there's 17 available currently. That's an Evoque, that's a Sport, that's a Sport, that's a Sport, that's a Sport, that's an Evoque, that's a Sport, that's an Evoque. Now, oh. I don't quite understand Copart because there are definitely L322s around, but their way of searching for cars is really complicated and you can never find, here we go, Range Rover, 70 Range Rovers. Let's just tick all of these. And I want one that's probably up to 2012 because I want an L322. I'll put 2013 then. Okay, here we go. Yeah, and that's a Category S, not interested in that. This is nice, Category N, side damage. Looks like a 3.6 TDV8. Oh my goodness, it's absolutely buggered. Look at it. Nope. No thank you. What I want is a green one. Tan interior. One owner and it's the queen. I think I'm probably dreaming a little bit there, aren't I? And I want it for two grand as well. Forgot to mention that bit. Category U, that just means used and record of oh, mechanical damage. What's wrong with it? Let's have a guess. Air suspension. Engine will not start. Oh, it's worse. Engine will not start. Engine stripped some parts in boot. Uh, there's another one here. Side damage. This is the same one I've just looked at. No. Uh, I don't. Can someone tell me, Range Rover fanatics in the in the audience, what are these? I know that. So you have you have some L322s with no side steps, some with fixed side steps some with deployable side steps, and then there's this silver bar on some of them, which I've not been able to work out. Was that an option from factory? Was it like a sort of half side step option? Yeah, I, I don't know what this is, or is it something aftermarket? Because you see it on quite a lot of them. So if anyone, well, I know there are a lot of L322 anoraks in, in my channel audience. If, if anyone knows about that, would you let me know? Because I, I really, it bothers me so much. You have no idea. Because I should mention, I spend about three hours a day looking at L322s. This is not a special thing for a video. This is literally me just turning, oh, look at this. Sorry, look at this. Beautiful, this. Blue uh, with blue seats, cream piping, cream leather dash, Oh, that's gorgeous, isn't it? That is fantastic. What is it? It's 3.6 litre TDV8. Does not run. Oh dear. It just says bonnet jammed and no power to engine. Well, that's handy, isn't it? Yeah, that's a shame. 
130,000 miles. Definitely not one for me. I, I do not want to buy a car that doesn't run. That is a nightmare. That is an utter nightmare. On that then, <laughs> I think we'll end this video. Uh, hopefully that was interesting because I know lots of people don't, well, have never used Copart or really know what it is. I should say, uh, well, one, I'm, this is not sponsored by Copart in any way at all. Uh, and also it cost me, I think it was a hundred quid. I think it's a hundred quid for a year's membership on Copart. Um, and actually when I purchased that, I, it was in the thought that I could go to a Copart site and actually film there and just, well, and well, actually just look around the cars, but you can't. You can only look online. What you can do is, if I was really interested in the car, I could request to have a FaceTime with someone at Copart who would then book in a slot with me and, and walk around the car. And obviously, they'd presumably switch it on and show me around anything I was interested in. Uh, but I've never done that. But that's how you, I guess, if you were buying something much higher value and much riskier, that's what you would do to fully have it assessed. Because once you've bid on the car, it's legally binding there's absolutely no it's not like ebay where you can just ignore the person or sometimes cancel your bid uh, as i found out the hard way with the tt if you bid that's it there's absolutely no no excuse if i accidentally bid 100 grand on a car i'm going to be going to court for that 100 grand um so yeah so that's how you do your due diligence is you you do a facetime um but yeah hopefully that was interesting uh, for you guys to see some of the stuff that is on uh, Copart available to buy but also some of the things that I'm currently watching let me know your thoughts uh, on oh, that Boxster S and that yeah I'm excited about the Boxster actually see what happens but also the XC90 I really want to buy that hopefully in the next few videos you see I bought a 300,000 mile Volvo XC90 uh, and you'll know where it came from if you see that title so thanks so much for watching this video make sure you're subscribed if you're not already comment below any questions you have but most importantly, make sure to give this video a thumbs up because that helps YouTube make it get more views, which is helpful for me because it means I get more money and means I can risk buying more things like this. So thank you so much all for watching and I'll see you in the next one very, very soon.